Hey guys, I'm Dan, one of the engineers at Mishimoto. Today, we're in the Mishi Garage to show you how to install the all-new Mishimoto primary radiator for the 2011 Plus Ford 6.7 liter power stroke. Let's check it out. Tools needed to install the Mishimoto primary radiator for the 2011 Plus Ford Power Stroke 6.7 liter diesel are 8 millimeter wrench, 10 millimeter wrench, quarter drive ratchet, extension, 9.30 second socket, 8 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, 3 8 drive, 13 millimeter socket, 3 8 ratchet, extension, pick tool, needle nose pliers, pop clip pliers, funnel, Ford approved coolant. The coolant we used was Dexcool Extended Life. The Ford number is WSS97B44-D. Installation time is about four hours and is a four out of five on the difficulty level. First thing we're gonna do is undo the one pop clip on the driver's side of the truck that is holding a little side plastic vent to the front of the grill. Next, we're gonna remove four 10 millimeter bolts from the top of the grill. Okay, now that we have all four bolts undone, we're gonna go ahead and unseat the grill from the front of the truck and then we can remove the grill. Remove the headlights from the truck. In order to do this, you need to remove four bolts from the headlight assembly. All four of these bolts are 10 millimeter. This truck has HIDs. Normally there are harnesses right here. In this case, we will disconnect the HIDs. Next, we're gonna remove the lower grill bracket. In order to do this, we're gonna remove one pop clip, four 13 millimeter bolts, two on each side. And two 10 millimeter bolts, one on each side. Now that we have all of our bolts out, we're good to remove our lower grill mount from the front of the truck. In order to do this, pull on the tabs on the upper part of the mount and remove. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to drain the coolant from the secondary radiator. In order to make this a little bit easier, we're going to go ahead and remove one pop clip that is holding the rubber shroud over top of where the drain plug is. If you have any spare quarter inch hose laying around the shop or in your garage, take a little bit of this and put it on the bottom nipple of the drain plug. This will make cleaning up later a lot easier. Next, using a pair of pliers, go ahead and loosen the drain plug. Next, we're gonna drain the primary radiator. Be sure to have two buckets ready because this radiator does hold a lot of coolant. Next, we're gonna remove two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the trans cooler to the upper radiator support. Next, we're gonna undo the hood release cable from the radiator support. In order to do this, use a pick tool and come into these two little tabs. Then you can remove the vehicle side of the cable, okay? Once you have the cable undone, you can go ahead and remove the one cable tie from the radiator support. Next, we're gonna remove one 10 millimeter bolt that holds the hood light switch onto the front radiator support. Once you have the hood switch undone, you can go ahead and remove the two 10 millimeter bolts on each side of the radiator stays. Next, we're gonna remove two 13 millimeter bolts from the top of the radiator support. There's one on each side. Next, we're gonna go ahead and unplug the horn assembly. Now that we have all of the bolts out, you can go ahead and remove the upper radiator support. In order to do this, you need to push up on both sides and roll it out from the mounts for the radiator. Next, we're gonna undo the two pop clips that hold this little rubber flap onto the front of the truck. Next, loosen the one worm gear on the crossover pipe. Next, we're gonna remove two clips for the two quick disconnects on the side of the secondary radiator. Be sure to have a bucket ready to go because these thermostats are already closed and there's sure to be coolant sitting in here. 
Now that we have our quick disconnects done on the passenger side of the truck, we're going to go ahead and take either a shirt or a towel, in our case a shirt, and we're going to wrap this cooler up so that we don't damage the, the paint on the truck. At the same time, remove the crossover pipe. Okay, and now we can let this down and let it rest on the bumper. Next, we're gonna undo the one line tie that's holding the transmission cooler line onto the front of the AC condenser. Next, we're gonna remove the two remaining pop clips from the rubber flap on the passenger side of the secondary radiator. Next, we're gonna remove the two eight millimeter bolts that hold the AC condenser to the secondary radiator. There's one on each side. Next, we're gonna remove the hose clamp and hose for the front hose on the secondary radiator. Next, we're gonna unseat the AC condenser from the secondary radiator and rest it on the front bumper. Before you do that, I would recommend putting down a towel of some sort to protect your bumper. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the passenger side rubber flap. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the three remaining hoses from the back of the secondary radiator. There are two on the passenger side, one on the driver's side. This hose is the driver's side hose. Next, we're gonna remove the four eight millimeter bolts that are holding the secondary radiator to the primary radiator. Then we're gonna remove the secondary radiator from the truck. This is a big radiator, so I'd have a friend help you to remove it from the truck. Next, we're gonna remove the overflow hose from the radiator. Now that we have the overflow hose removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the lower radiator hose. Next, we're gonna unclip the one hose from the primary radiator. Next, we're gonna remove the four eight millimeter bolts that hold the fan shroud to the primary radiator. Next, we're gonna unseat both sides of the fan shroud from the back of the primary radiator. Now we have everything disconnected from our primary radiator, we can go ahead and remove it from the truck. Now that we have our radiators side by side, we're gonna go ahead and swap all of the hardware from the stock radiator over to the Mishimoto radiator. First thing we're gonna swap are the two upper grommets, one on each side. Then we're gonna swap the two lower grommets, one on each side, okay. and then eight nut clips, four on each side. Last thing we're gonna do before we put the Mishimoto primary radiator into the truck is gonna to be to swap the factory radiator hood gasket from the top of the stock radiator onto the Mishimoto radiator. These pop clips have a tendency to break, so please use the provided Mishimoto hardware. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and install the radiator gasket onto the primary radiator. Now that we have our hood gasket on the radiator, we're gonna go ahead and put the Mishimoto primary radiator into the truck. Now that we have the radiator installed in the truck, we're gonna go ahead and pick up on the fan shroud and reseat the fan shroud onto the back of the radiator. Next, we're gonna reinstall the four eight millimeter bolts that hold the fan shroud to the primary radiator. There are two on each side. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the upper and lower radiator hose as well as the overflow hose. Before we install the upper and lower radiator hose though, go ahead and click back in the quick release clips so that when you go ahead and install the hose, you hear a click and you know for a fact that it is connected properly. Now reinstall the overflow hose to the Mishimoto radiator. Now that we have our primary radiator installed, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the secondary radiator. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the four eight millimeter bolts that hold the secondary radiator to the primary radiator. Next, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the overflow hose for the secondary radiator, as well as two of the lower secondary radiator hoses. One is on the passenger side, one is on the driver's side.
Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the rubber gasket that is on the passenger side of the radiator. This, we have to install this now so that we can get it between the AC condenser and the secondary radiator. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to reposition the AC condenser onto the secondary radiator and then reinstall the two 8mm bolts that hold it in place. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the one radiator hose that goes into the front of the secondary radiator as well as swing over the crossover pipe that we had a t-shirt wrapped around and get that installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and reposition the one clamp on the crossover pipe back onto the outlet on the radiator and tighten it down. Now we're gonna go ahead and refasten the transmission cooler line into the transmission cooler line holder like so. And then we're gonna reposition the driver's side rubber flap into place with its pop clips. Now we're ready to go ahead and reinstall the upper radiator support. Before we do so, we want to make sure that we have the horn wiring harness resting on top of the secondary radiator. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself having to fish it out and get it in place. Now go ahead and reconnect the horn harness. Now that we have our upper radiator support in place, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the two 13 millimeter bolts, one on each side. Now we're going to reinstall the two radiator stays, one on each side. These each use two 10 millimeter bolts. Next, we're going to go ahead and reinstall the hood light switch. This is one 10 millimeter bolt. Now we're going to reinstall the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the transmission cooler to the radio support. Now it's time to reinstall the hood release cable. Now reinstall the hood release cable mounting bracket. Next, reinstall the lower grill bracket. Make sure to clip it in and then fasten it with the four 13 millimeter bolts and two 10 millimeter bolts. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the headlights. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the grill onto the truck. We install one pop clip into the corner of the driver's side. And then next, we install the four 10 millimeter bolts into the top of the grill. Now that we have our truck all buttoned up, we're going to go ahead and fill it with a 50-50 mix of coolant and distilled water. Remember to use extended life coolant. Also, refill the secondary radiator with a 50-50 mix as well. All right, guys, now that we have our primary and secondary cooling systems filled, we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn the truck on and turn the heat on high. That'll help us get any bubbles out of the cooling system. And remember, this is a diesel truck, so it might take about 30 minutes to get the truck hot enough for the thermostats to open.